Hi guys, my name's Doug. Welcome to My Messy Garage. In this week's video, we're going to continue working on the $100 abandoned Kawasaki four-wheeler. I'm still waiting for the CDI box to come in. Haven't been able to get across to uh, the U.S. to pick it up yet, but uh, it's a good opportunity to get the carburetor dial in. Follow along. Hope you enjoy this one. Thanks for watching. The main reason that I have taken the uh, back plastics off is that I want to get at. Carburetor is in under here and it's going to need to be removed and have a little ride in the ultrasonic cleaner. I pretty much guarantee that it's going to be all gummed up. We've got our air box here. The filter doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape. You don't want to lose the uh, clips off of that as I've only got three and there's supposed to be four. And we need a uh, Phillips screwdriver. There's one and two bolts up on the top here that mount the uh, the air box to the chassis. And then there's the boot that attaches it to the carburetor. Those two came out nicely. I don't think this is the right size screwdriver for that. Nope, it is. Okay, boot is loose. Voltage regulator is attached to the air box, just to be a little annoying. Here's our air box separated. Over on the other side of the carburetor is the fuel line, and it is absolutely rock solid. Not a good sign, but that's why we're checking these things. This is not the standard clamp that is supposed to be holding the carburetor on here, I can pretty much guarantee. I'll get it out of there. Just the same. Okay, the carburetor came out relatively easily. There's the carburetor that is loose. We've got our throttle cable that comes down into the top. And we've got our fuel line over on the other side that, as I say, is absolutely rock solid. So I'll be cutting that off, replacing it with some decent Tigon. And oh, can't forget we've got our choke cable that comes down here. The choke cable actually appears to work, surprisingly. So we will try and extract it. I got the cap unscrewed from the top of the, uh, the carburetor here. And surprise, surprise, the uh, throttle barrel, there's kind of a barrel that slides up and down in here, is uh, apparently stuck. And here, that clamp, try and get the uh, choke plunger removed. It seems to be coming fairly freely. A little grungy, but not too bad. Now we can try and pull the list out of here. And we got some ugly fuel dripping out everywhere. The good news is the plunger down the throat of the carburetor. I don't know if you can see that. It doesn't look too terribly disgusting. So we're probably just a little bit stuck. Try putting some parts cleaner down here. Hey, the good news is the cable isn't stuck, it's just the throttle barrel. I'm going to very carefully take the flat blade screwdriver, get in there and see if I can pop that throttle up a little bit. Oh, there we go. There we are. It's a little bit grungy. Anyways, all that will clean up. The way this works, there's a big spring here on um, that's holding that's your uh, throttle return spring but if you bring that spring up so that it's back and you pull the uh, throttle cable down through this little uh, notch in the side of the barrel you can extract the barrel from there carefully a little bit so that the spring doesn't go flying and there we are I don't know how well that's going to show up in there, but on the uh, down in the barrel of the carburetor, there is a tip of this screw. That's your idle adjustment. And then there's a keyway over on the other side. The keyway on the other side engages with that little keyway. And the uh, slide goes down inside. I think that's as far as I want to take work on the actual machine. 
The uh, throttle cable is good, so I bought that when I didn't need to. Back at my garage, we've got a uh, Makuni, I believe it is. I saw, yeah, Makuni. You can kind of see it under the dirt here. Makuni carburetor that is off of the four wheeler. And we need to get this thing cleaned up. It's uh, pretty grungy. Before we start, I want to make a point of showing you this the vessel. This is a JIS screwdriver. Kind of looks like a Phillips, but it's not actually. And when you're working on a Makuni carburetor, if you try and use a standard Phillips screwdriver, you're probably going to end up stripping a bunch of the fasteners. If you use the proper JIS style screwdriver, it's going to work. I'll throw a link to this vessel screwdriver from Amazon down in the description, and uh, that'll help you get it. Get one if you need to work on a Makuni. So we're going to start off by getting the uh, by getting the boot off of here. This is the air box boot. This side runs from the air filter box into the carburetor and it is pretty crispy. Now it is possible from what I understand you can soak these in hot water and they will soften up a little bit. And that's the fuel line. Definitely, definitely crispy. This is a not sure what this is whether it's an overflow or it likewise is very crispy try and replace it with some tigon tubing so we've got our the outside of the carburetor it's all grungy got a paintbrush a little bit of parts cleaner i'm not that terribly concerned because i do plan on putting the carburetor in the ultrasonic cleaner that i have warming up right here but we'll take the worst of the grunge off the outside of this anyways we can kind of see what we have in the way of adjustments so the first item we're going to take out here is the idle screw and the way this works is it's a screw that protrudes into the throat of the carburetor and it just forces the slide up a little bit the more you screw it in the more it forces the slide of the carburetor to, to be open half one half two half three half four four and a half so off the, the seat is four and a half it's always a good idea to write that down now we can just wind this out and we can see this fits in here and the more you screw this in the more it goes up and down okay i think our next part to remove is going to be the float bowl and again having the JIS screwdriver helps out considerably a lot less risk in uh, stripping the heads of these screws out get the last screw out of there now we just give it a little bit of a tap and I'm not too terribly concerned about the uh, saving the gasket on this I have a kit that I picked up on Amazon or eBay or one of them I don't remember which and that will provide me these gaskets and a bunch of parts. Looking down in here, there's a little bit of scum in the bottom. It's not too bad. Uh, it doesn't look like there was too much water in there. No massive amounts of corrosion. A little bit of dirt. Ooh, that gasket is crispy. Try and take it off in one piece, if for no other reason than it makes it easier to clean. So I believe this is the float bowl drain. If I had to guess, I would say somebody's been chewing at that with a Phillips screwdriver. That is everything out of the float bowl. Set it aside. Here's our floats. You can see the uh, main jet is a little bit gross. Give this a push. Get it to come out a little bit. I'll pull on the rod. There's our hinge. Floats. And the needle. That is our seat retainer. This is the main jet. This appears to be the idle jet here. And uh, so if you if you rebuild a carburetor and the machine won't idle afterwards, your idle jet is the problem. If you rebuild the carburetor and it's boggy, doesn't want to run at full power afterwards, then that tells you but the problem is your main jet and also I don't know how well that's showing up 
there's little tiny holes in that tube that just came out of there and quite often those will get plugged up with gelled fuel and that will have a uh, very negative effect on how a uh, piece of equipment will run. I guess this is probably like an idle mixture. So we're half, one, one and a half. That's kind of normal for a jet. One and a half to two and a half is on most carburetors is probably a safe adjustment range. And I see there's like this is a passage here that we'll have to make sure is clean. Uh, all the passages in and around the carburetor, we'll have to make sure that they're clean. The enricher or the choke passage we'll need to make sure is uh, good and clean. And that looks kind of along the lines of what that is part of. Looking at the tubes, the way they work. Okay, I think we can put this in the pot. On a cleaner, uh, used, I don't know, primarily in the jewelry industry. Um, works fantastic for cleaning small engine carburetors. What else have we got to throw in there? Sure, we need to throw the slide in, see if we can get some of this black gunk off of there. The main jet. Uh, oh, there does not appear to be a complete main jet in the uh, kit, so definitely that needs to go in. May as well send the spring in to get it cleaned up as well. We'll throw this plate in. Uh, probably going to use the new needle and seat. All of these parts will, that we have, new ones, we'll probably use, but we'll throw these in. Now smaller stuff like this is going to go through the mesh the, that's the basket that everything's sitting in. So we will throw it into a little basket that came with the cleaning solution. It's basically kind of a can that's been cut off. What I'm using is carburetor cleaner from Napa. Uh, several of the different companies make something that's similar. Gunk is one that I've seen. The idea is that you're supposed to just put the stuff in the little can and soak it in the, in the uh, box. But with a little bit of heat and a little bit of vibration, it seems to do a better job of cleaning things up. May as well throw these hose clamps in while we're at it them all nice and shiny. The float is fairly clean we don't need to clean it up and otherwise all I've got left in there is screws. Put the lid back on and now we turn it on. Now you see the time is set for 30 minutes quite honestly we don't need to run it for 30 minutes probably about 20 is all we really need and the temperature is set for 55 it's currently at 36 and that's probably plenty warm enough as it is but we'll leave it warm up a little more and run with the vibrator here and i'll bring you back when all the parts are cleaned up we've got everything cooked here i guess went for 20 25 minutes something like that hopefully it cleaned up And you remember how grungy the uh, inside of that float bowl was? Nice and shiny now. Plate's okay. Slide. It still has a bunch of black stuff on it. I don't know whether that's coating, like a paint or powder coating that uh, has wore off in a few places, or whether that is some kind of buildup on there. Definitely seems to be well stuck anyways spring it wasn't too bad oh main jet much better idle jet still a little grunge on there but for the most part pretty clean there's our idle speed adjustment nice and shiny our mixture adjust jet it's our uh, seat there is the e-clip that came off of our main mixture jet that goes up and down as part of the slide. And here's the, uh, the main carburetor body. That looks pretty clean. Usually there are some small little holes down in the throat on the side there somewheres. Now this might be a slightly different model of Makuni that I'm used to. I am going to put the cover back on this because with the, uh, the heat that I've added to that it is kind of gassing off some stuff that's a little on the stinky side. 
We'll spray this down with the uh, parts and brakes cleaner. Now there's a little tiny hole in the end of that tube that I'm trying to get the straw lined up with. Anyways, we're going to blow through all those passages with compressed air to get all the scum out of them. So that shouldn't be a problem. That looks pretty decent. Here's the original and the new idle speed adjuster. One of these little springs. I don't know, the original cleaned up. I think I'm going to stick with the original. Always a good idea to use original parts when, uh, whenever possible. Uh, this didn't come with a new main jet, which is kind of surprising, but it did come with some O-rings. So we will replace the O-ring. If we can get the O-ring off of there, it definitely has seen better days. Now that I got the worst of the carb cleaner uh, stuff rinsed off the parts, I can take the gloves off because I need finer dexterity to be able to put the parts back together. Before we start doing too much assembling, you take and blow out these passages. Okay, everything's blown out. I do see one more passage in there. Hopefully that's got it all. Now we can put the main jet in. I do have a replacement idle circuit jet, but my preference is to reuse the original, if at all possible. Just because a $20 carb kit is not necessarily going to be the right parts. Whereas the factory parts are the factory original parts. Snug this down all the way, then we bring it back out 1.5 turns. Don't want to ram it in there and wreck it or anything, but half, one, half. Now one thing I do think we need to replace is the needle. Needle has a little bit of a rubber tip on it, and the rubber does tend to wear down over time. So we will place that with a new one. If we can make this little wire, there we go, little wire hook that hooks on the tab on the float, and then gets dropped down into the seat. We then take our hinge pin and run it back through. Next item is the drain for the float bowl. Again, it looks like it's been chewed on a little bit. There's a little bit of scum down there. There we are, no more scum. And the idea of this is that you have a, uh, a screw that you can undo. Turn the fuel off, undo this screw, and it will drain the fuel out of the float bowl and prevent the carburetor from getting all scummy. Definitely, we will be re or using the new gasket kind of a rubber type thing where the original was a uh, fiber. Put this into place and the right way around. Put our four screws in. Now we have our slide assembly. I thought the black was corrosion or something, but it's almost like it's a paint or a powder coating or something that's on the, uh, on the slide. So it's not anything that we necessarily need to worry about removing. We've got our spring down in there. That is all part of the cap that we left on the machine. We do have our main mixture needle. And you'll notice that there are a series of grooves at the top. And we have an E-clip. And I have to be completely honest, I do not know which hole that clip was in. I believe it was midway, but we don't know for sure. Down in the bottom is a clip. I can get it to pop out of there. That is supposed to hold the needle in place. We do have a new clip, so we'll use that. Slide that down through the center. We do have a new mixture needle, but with not having replaced the corresponding jet inside the carburetor, which is uh, that right there, and also uh, not knowing whether this Jeep kit has the correct one in it or not, I think we're gonna go with the original. I don't see any serious damage to it. The uh, uh, we'll focus, there we are. Um, it looks like it's in fairly good shape. Maybe a little bit of wear in around the idle area, but we'll go with the original. For now, if we find that we have runnability issues with the carburetor, we can always change that out. We've got the parts. So the way this works 
is whenever you press the throttle, and you'll see how this barrel slides up. That would be open throttle, and it allows more fuel to come up through the middle as the narrower part of the needle presents itself to the opening. And then as we come down, the, the needle gets bigger and blocks more of the fuel to correspond with the uh, less air going through the throat of the carburetor. Fairly simple way of doing this, and it does work quite well. So I think this is probably a good place to end this. Uh, obviously this needs to go back on the machine, but we won't worry about putting the carburetor back on the machine until we get the CDI box. And uh, hopefully that'll make this thing run quite nicely once we get some spark. Thanks for checking out this video. Greatly appreciate it. If you uh, like what you see, why don't you hit that subscribe button? Leave me a comment if you don't like what you see. Tell me what I can do better. And uh, ring the bell icon if you want to be notified when more great content from Doug's Messy Garage gets uploaded. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, on to the next mess.